and that's so, it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so hi everyone, welcome to one more interview here for Java EEH, the next frontier. And today we have here our friend, Mr. Antoine. I I, I said it correctly. It's Antoine. Yeah, Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Antoine, very uh, welcome here today, and uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. And it's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here as well. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, perfectly. perfectly. Okay, because it's very, it's quite, it's a bit jumpy. Okay. <laughs> so Antoine. First of all, can you tell uh, a little about your involvement with Java EE, CGI, specifications, and wh what projects you are working today? Okay. So uh, my inv involvement with Java EE started uh, nearly 10 years ago uh, with Java EE 6, but at the time I was only uh, a user of the, the Java EE stack. And when I joined uh, Red Hat uh, four years ago now, uh, uh, I became very, very, very soon uh, the spec lead of CDI. So one of the most interesting, from my point of view, uh, GSR in, uh, in Java EE. Uh, so I started with the CDI 1.2 maintenance release. Uh, it was uh, three years ago, if I don't mistake. And uh, and after that, uh, I, I had the full lead on the, the CTI2 uh, uh, specification. So, yeah, it, it took uh, ne nearly three years to get out with this new version of CDI because there was a lot of uh, requested features and stuff that uh, we weren't done before because the the lack of the lack of time. And uh, uh, now that CDI is released, uh, I'm working more uh, precisely on microprofile and uh, on the full tolerance part of the microprofile uh, uh, right now. But I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm in the Wild Flight Swarm team at Red Hat working on the, how to say, the specification part of the micro microprofile. Okay. So... Basically, you've been working a lot, right? <laughs> you <too>. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we are almost on the release date for Java EH and its uh, whole umbrella. Uh, what are your expectations related to, to this re release in terms of uh, improvements, features, bug fixes, uh, the coolest, uh, coolest points of the, the, the whole specification? What are your expectations? Regarding Java EE, uh, yeah. my expectation is that we will have more uh, specification uh, using CDI and having a, and thus having a more consistent way, a more consistent programming model through CDI. So that's I think that's that's a good news. Uh, for instance, the new security uh, GSR. I think it's uh, GSR three seven five. If I'm not wrong uh, is totally based on CDI. We we also try to work with uh, Jack Serres to to see how, uh, how we could make uh, uh, the CDI and Jack Serres um, have a better integration be between both uh, GSR. So we didn't have enough time to do it uh, totally, but it's on the roadmap for a future uh, maintenance release. So I think that my expectation for Java E8 is to provide a more consistent uh, user experience, developer user experience, and having a, a more uh, consistent programming model, thanks to the CDI programming model, and uh, and provide yeah, provide a, an, an easier way to uh, to build and construct stuff, uh, thanks to this uh, programming model. I can give you uh, uh, some example to make things simpler from the, the CDI point of view, if you want. Uh, sure. if, yeah. So in CDI, in CDI 2, there are a, a lot of uh, little uh, enhancements, but th there are big ones as well. One of the, I won't say it's a huge enhancement, but it's an important one. We work on making a development of portable extensions. So portable extensions as, uh, are the way 
you use in CDI to integrate third-party framework or third-party specification. So we work a lot to sim simplify the, the writing portable extensions. So before uh, CDI 2, when you had to write a portable extension, you had to implement uh, a lot of SPI uh, interface and you have to, to do a lot of verbose code, etc. Uh, in the CDI 2, we had um, uh, what is called a constructor framework configurator framework, sorry, which is like a kind of builder for this SPI. And you can, uh, you can create all the metadata you need for, the, um, for most of the portable extension uh, in a very easier way. So for instance, I have th this example of the, this uh, free, free, free places with uh, 800 uh, lines of code reduced to, to four lines of codes. Oh. So awesome. providing you, uh, yeah, provide. It's not. It's not that it was. Uh, um, how would you say? It, 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 it was not complicated, but it was not very um, elegant, very clean, and uh, it was very verbose. And today, it's quite elegant to, to write. And you and you you are not. Uh, if you are um, a beginner, you are not uh, wondering yourself. Am Am I doing this in the right way? Because it's. It seems a bit strange that I I have to write all these. Uh, <laughs> classes mm -hmm. implementation to do what I need. Uh, I have the, the feeling that it doesn't go the right way. And uh, we, we, we gave uh, an answer by providing this configurator uh, API to have people uh, uh, building those um, uh, metadata in a very easy way. That's one of the, the points that I think will help uh, over uh, GSR and a third party framework to, to have a better integration, to provide a better integration with, with CDI. So having those, uh, having this, how to say, this kind of kernel from the, the programming model point of view in Java E, I think will bring a lot of enhancements and a lot of, uh, uh, how to say, enhancements in the user experience for, for, for the developers. Oh, that's awesome. And I heard that uh, this new CDI will make it easier to work with JSF as well for managed beans and, and so on. Uh, can you say, a, a, can you talk a little about it? Uh, I, I'm not sure about the JSF uh, side <laughs> because I didn't <laughs> check yet, but uh, I think they, they use uh, uh, one of the stuff we, we introduce uh, uh, in CDI 2. I'm not sure, but I think they, they are using the configurator uh, API I just talked before, and they probably uh, take advantage of the new asynchronous uh, asynchronous event that we introduced in CDI. That was one of the, the, the features that was most uh, requested uh, to have a way to provide asynchronous uh, event in CDI, and I think a few um, a few GSR around uh, uh, Java EE are using it. So it 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 yeah, it brings better integration and more efficient integration. Uh, but to be honest, I didn't check uh, what GSF uh, did uh, on their side. But they probably used one of the the, the tools that we provide to ease the. Uh, uh, their integration and add a few, a few stuff to their integration as well. Oh yeah, got it. Um, seems like everybody is very excited about CDI. Uh, many guys that I talk uh, said what you said about CDI. That's one of the more, one of the most cool coolest uh, JSRs and new features for Java. So uh, if everybody, anyone uh, wanna try CDI to today with that fish five maybe. Uh, is it possible, right? Or we, we should wait until the, the, the release. We can have some sample, or can we can we try some code? I know you can you can try CDI today, uh, because first now CDI support Java IC, so you can bootstrap the CDI container uh, on Java IC. Uh, before that, it was possible to do that, but it was at the, the implementation level. So the reference implementation weld uh, had a, a way to be booted on Java IC. And the same for uh, the, the, the over implementation, Apache OpenWebBeans. But 
With CDI2, we introduce uh, in the specification a way to boot in Java IC and we split the, the spec to make sure that uh, features that are uh, only Java IE relevant are in a specific part of the spec and we, we design all the, the features that are available for Java IC. So you can start today uh, uh, with CDI on Java IC uh, and, uh, and play with that. So you, you can check the if you want to, to get started on that, you can uh, check the cdi-spec.org uh, website, so our website, in the blog post in the news section, uh, one of the latest latest news, you have uh, some information to to get started with CDI and Java IC. And the other solution you have is to get a, a preview of CDI, of Java IE 8 or CDI 2, uh, thanks to Glassfish 5, so I think that uh, the last uh, the last build of uh, Glassfish 5 provides CDI2. It was released a few days ago, and if you want uh, only to test CDI2 and not uh, over uh, Java yet new feature, you can also uh, use uh, Red Hat uh, open source application server Wildfly. And the Weld team provide, provided a patch to patch Wildfly uh, 10 uh, to change the CDI implementation and switch to the new version of CDI uh, on Wildfly. So you can today check your Java E7 uh, Wildfly open source application server and patch it to replace the CDI 1.2 uh, implementation by a CDI 2.0 implementation. Of course, what you get in the end is not a Java E8 uh, nor a Java E7 application server. You've got a Java E7 application server with a, a spec that is not in, <laughs> in <laughs> Java E7, meaning CDI 2, but it's a kind of preview with stable GSR around uh, uh, CDI 2. And since CDI, and well, the CDI2 and Weld3 are uh, have been released uh, now nearly two months ago. You also have a stable version of um, uh, of CDI2 and Weld, so you are in a, in a yeah in a in a nice environment to to play with CDI2. Of course, if you want to test uh, over Java 8 uh, nice stuff, you 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 you'd prefer to go to Glass Fire, I guess. Sure, sure. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I will try today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Tuan, uh, talking a little about Java EH, uh, took a, a little, little long time uh, since the last version uh, was in 2013, the Java E7. Yeah, 2013, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, many people think that it was a long time, I mean, some people don't, but whatever. Uh, do you think that this, this long it will have some impact? Uh, on the market, on the developers, on the community, in terms of adoption, uh, do you think m maybe some people can be a little insecure, or you are cool with that? You don't think it, it's a big deal? I'm not sure about that because I think that today Java e, Java e targets a big corporation, and they don't switch and they don't adopt. Uh, uh, new uh, technology uh, like that. They have to, to wait for that and I have a, a cycle to do that. So uh, uh, having a new application server every every two years uh, is meaningless for them. Uh, they, they need to to uh, to have, I, I don't know, I'm not sure for every, every corporate uh, customer, but they need to have five, at least five years uh, plan or um, perhaps six or seven years plan. So having this, this time between uh, releases is not, it's perhaps not a big problem uh, for existing customer. It could be a problem for a new customer. If you want to have new users, uh, the, yeah, this, uh, this rate of release may seems a bit slow. Uh, but today, uh, uh, I think that thanks to, to CDI, you have the opportunity to update uh, an existing application server uh, through Java E7 and tomorrow through Java E8, thanks to CDI. Because as you know, uh, CDI provides this portable extension. And since a lot of today, a lot of uh, GSR are 
CDI based or integrate well with CDI. You can use CDI as a kind of as a kind of uh, how to say um, mu mutation tool for Java AE by uh, adding third party framework in a nice way integrating this third party framework in a portable way in um, the programming model so you, you you have you have a solution to wait between uh, java AE release thanks to to cdi uh, so it it could be an, a new way to see stuff uh, to to have a release of um, java AE every i don't know uh, for four years five years but in between uh, you have this uh, tool that allows you to test new feature new uh, um, yeah, new feature uh, from new framework thanks to cdi integration and provide these new tools uh, in a very uh, seamless way and uh, and melting it with the user experience so it's you you have an in-between solution that's one of the answer and the other answer is the the way that uh, java e is, is taking today uh, obviously uh, there are um, uh, the, the the plans for java e9 are not well known uh, right now but they probably are going uh, uh, to microservices so it will be uh, something um, but that uh, perhaps less monolithic and more modular and uh, and today uh, from the, the the red hat point of view we also have this uh, uh, micro profile initiative which is uh, already a microservice approach uh, based on uh, java e specs but it's not java e it's using the specs and uh, integrating them to provide uh, a way to to create microservices so i think that uh, the, the, there will, um, in the future, there will be uh, uh, always Java e release, but perhaps there also will be in between the release of some GSR to help those projects, uh, the, the um, micro profile stack and other uh, stack if uh, Oracle decide to, to create their own ma microservice stacks to be able to make evolve uh, them uh, and not wait four years to have all the specs ready for uh, uh, a new uh, um, uh, version of Java e, a new version of the, all the stack. But okay. uh, that's 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 uh, only my analysis. I may be totally wrong. But uh, anyway, I keep the idea of having now that having CDI in uh, Java e and having in CDI the possibility to uh, update or enhance uh, the stack in a portable way is a very nice feature and uh, uh, make you uh, more um, how to say more eager to wait for a new version of Java e because you have a way to, to do a, a enhancement in a nice way. Okay, so uh, as you said about micro profile microservice, uh, let's get into the, this point a little. Um, do you believe that this new version of Java e uh, is more suitable to work with uh, microservice, micro profile, uh, well, to support micro profile? Uh, or maybe we should really wait until the Java e 9 to have better specification, more modularity, or whatever. No, I, th I think it's we, we already we already have a lot of solution out there, even with Java e seven. Uh, of course, it's better to have those uh, those stack based on uh, Java e eight, but you already have what you need. And the, the proof of concept that we have at Red Hat with Wildflight Swarm and other vendors that are doing also micro profile uh, uh, implementation. Uh, proof that we can uh, use uh, the standard, integrate them in another way or in a similar way than Java e, but not all the spec together. Use third party solution. For instance, right now I'm working on the integration of the uh, Netflix Istrix uh, framework to provide full tolerance uh, feature in Macro Profile. So Istrix is not a spec. But we are creating a spec above Istrix and over a full tolerance framework, and we integrate them 
in microprofile uh, uh, through uh, a subspec of microprofile uh, working for full tolerance. So we we have the, um, the a way to integrate non-existing feature in the stack and uh, when those features will be uh, um, uh, more officially specified uh, it, it will be uh, possible to switch to them so today we can start to work with microservices and of course with java e8 it will be easier and uh, and for Java A9, uh, I can't answer right now, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but I think that the, the, the roadmap, uh, Oracle roadmap is to, to, go, to go in that direction. So uh, there is no reason that it should be, um, it, it will be easier, but you, you, are not, you are not stuck today and uh, have to wait to go to the microservice uh, uh, universe uh, for, um, with the, the existing uh, specs and implementation around, uh, around there. Sure. Uh, many people have has some doubts uh, uh, about the relationship between Java E and MicroProfile. Uh, can you can you detail a little about it? Uh, is it another specification? One depends on another. Uh, just just to clarify to some people that uh, still don't don't know the this new new initiative. <coughs> initiative. Uh, okay, I. I'm not sure uh, I'd be the best person to answer because the, it's not a technical answer that uh, you, you are waiting for. Uh, I think that Red Hat uh, and others decided to launch the micro profile because, the, the, uh, because Oracle was not very uh, responsive on the Java E side. It was uh, more than one year ago, one year ago. And in fact, the, the, the result is that uh, uh, how to say is that that Oracle uh, uh, wake up and uh, restart the work they did on Java yet? So it was one of the goal. And tomorrow, uh, with Java in, uh, in the target, we, we have to. Um, when I say we, I mean Red Hat and others uh, in, in uh, that, uh, that are working on the micro profile specification. So uh, we have to wait uh, to see uh, what Oracle wants to do. Wants to do the in line to say, okay, uh, uh, do we stick to the uh, proposed have a element? But uh, if you if you want to to talk about the um, uh, uh, how to say the um, commitment of uh, Red Java I, the, this commitment is still there. Antoine, your your video and audio is delaying. I don't know if you can check it. Actually, you are freezing. So guys, we had a little little problem here. Let, let's see. Let's see if he, Antoine is able to to come back. Let's wait a minute. He's back. <laughs> ah, sorry. I moved uh, somewhere else nope. because I think that uh, something happened to the. I have some, sorry, I have some power uh, outage this morning, and I think one of the 
one of my access points just died. No problem. <laughs> no problem. We are still here. So I'm back. <laughs> okay, so I'm, we are back. Uh, so we lost the, the, the last points that you, you, you were saying, if you can repeat. So I, I was just saying that um, a commitment of Red Hat for Java e is still there, and there is no reason that it, it's going somewhere. And, uh, and we have to wait uh, for the, the announcement of what will be Java E9 to, to say uh, how, we, how, how we will uh, contribute to it, but probably we will do. There sure. is no, no doubt about this. Okay. So Antoine, uh, you work on the Red Hat. Uh, I don't know if you have some information about uh, plans related to Wildfly, uh, maybe uh, other tools where in compatibility with Java EH. Do, do you know something about it? Uh, no, there is no official announcement right now about <laughs> this, but uh, uh, make sure that there will be a, a Java E8 uh, implementation of Wildfly, of course, but there is no time frame right now announcement. Even internal, so if I, I, if I wasn't allowed to say to you, I couldn't even say you that uh, I'm not allowed to, to say to you because I, I don't have any internal information about this. <laughs> it's, not, sure. uh, it's not yet discussed, I think. For sure, no, no problem, because just to check it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a, a, a couple of weeks. Well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the shutdown of Java Net, and now all, all Java projects migrated to GitHub. Uh, yeah. Do you believe that this movement will bring the the community more closer to the to the specification, and we will make it easier to get involved and to contribute? Because I believe that all the Java ecosystem is all about community. Uh, yeah. I don't know if Java Net was very friendly uh, to many people to, to get involved. What do you think about this movement? I think it's a, it's a big, it's a big and huge improvement. And, uh, and that I, th I think that it will make uh, Java e more visible and uh, uh, add people uh, more, uh, uh, eager to uh, to contribute or look at what is Java e and uh, the different spec, uh, it's a it's a very good news to 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 see that Oracle goes uh, in that direction. Sure. So now it's very it's very young, so uh, we we cannot see any uh, any effect uh, uh, from the outside right now. But I'm 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 sure that it will uh, be uh, very um, uh, good for the, the, the future of uh, uh, Java E from a um, community point of view. Sure. So uh, Antoine, there are any resource that you will recommend for people that want to learn about Java E or want to start uh, learn Java E H or Java E as, as, as a generic? There are any resource books, blogs, podcasts, or whatever. <clears throat> Uh, I think that w one of the, the best book for Java E7, because I'm uh, not sure that there is already a Java E8 book, uh, is probably the one from my, my friend uh, Antonio. You know Antonio Goncalves? Yeah. Uh, so I think it's uh, uh, a press uh, edition. So Java E7 uh, is probably one of the, the more uh, uh, complete book on the, on the topic. Uh, regarding CDI, um, there is a book in the, the work. Uh, it's late <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to write it and I'm a bit late on that. But I will, uh, I will uh, start again to work on it uh, in, a, in a few days. And uh, you can go to the, um, uh, you can go to the cdispec.org where there are a few uh, elements to, to get started uh, uh, on CDI. And I also have my uh, own blog, which is next-presso.com, uh, where you have a, a few blog posts about advanced stuff in CDI. So uh, people can, have, can give a, a, a try to, to, to those uh, articles. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and on the cdispec.org, you also have a link to uh, introduction to CDI, presentation, et cetera, et cetera. 
Oh, that's awesome. I will, I will put the, share these links on the description of this video. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, Antoine, you have uh, any final words, any tips, any final thoughts for people that are watching us today? Well, uh, I think that a lot of people walked away from uh, Java in the last few years, and it because they 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 they, they thought that it was uh, not uh, how to say a modern platform, and they should they should uh, give it a try again because uh, when you look at what it can achieve right now and what you can do from the platform point of view and the development point of view, uh, it's very efficient, very powerful, and I think uh, the idea of having a standard is very important and supporting those standards is something uh, important to, to make sure that we are not um, uh, putting our customer in a cage. So it's, uh, it's something that I think people should try again and go beyond their, uh, the, 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 the received ideas and, uh, and learn about it because it's very uh, uh, powerful and, uh, and you get a lot of satisfaction when you, you understand how all these bricks uh, goes together. Uh, that's great. All right, awesome. So Antoine, <laughs> thank you very much again. Uh, thank very, you. Very honored to, 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 maybe have, to have the opportunity to interview you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for the technical uh, the technical glitches. <laughs> no, no, absolutely no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you were back. <laughs> so have a nice day okay. and thank you very much and wish you the best in your life and your career. Okay, have a nice day too. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. So guys, thank you very much for uh, watching us. And if you haven't subscribed on our Java channel, please click on the, this button down below. And see you the next time on the next interview. Bye-bye.